This is a peaceful political protest. No one has shown any evidence to the contrary. It's not a drug trafficking or human trafficking operation. It's not Al-Qaeda. These are Canadian citizens who drive trucks for a living. But they're being treated like a terror group. GoFundMe announced it would redirect the $10 million raised by supporters of the truckers to charities of its choice, presumably BLM, which it has supported since the very beginning. In other words, GoFundMe planned to steal that money. They were stopped from doing this, by the way, by a number of American attorneys general who threatened to sue the company. So the company backed off and they're going to refund the money, supposedly. But still, the truckers, the people for whom this money was intended, will not get it. So in the absence of GoFundMe doing what it's supposed to do, Others are filling the gap. An alternative crowdfunding website called Give, Send, Go has stepped up and raised already more than $5 million for the truckers. How long till they try to shut that down too? Some Canadians are clearly worried about that. They're turning to cryptocurrency. Tallycoin, for example, is a small crowdfunding service that uses Bitcoin. It's not controlled by banks. That's the point. They're hosting a fundraiser for the truckers. Now, why is this appealing? No one can steal the money. No government can pressure anyone to turn the money over because governments don't control crypto. Bitcoin goes from person A to person B and all the intermediary does, the company, is connect the two. It's pretty appealing. And you can imagine the long-term consequences here. If the people in charge in this country and in Canada want to make the US dollar irrelevant, they'll keep acting like this and soon that it will be. Either way, it's becoming very clear that the only way around the stranglehold that technology has on our human rights is decentralization.